There we go. Welcome to the 2024 Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Online Softball Clinic. With me today is Jason Esslinger, the softball liaison from the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Association. He will be our moderator. The 2024 Softball Advisory Committee members will participate in this clinic. Pat Pesha, Tom Berger, Jim Doyle, Craig Snyder, and Tom Sullivan are our regional advisors. They represent all parts of our state and we are dedicated to train umpires to be their best. Our agenda for this clinic, number one is the pitching rule and the 2024 changes. And we will show some pitching videos. We will go over approved drying agents. We'll talk about points of emphasis, uh, the time between half innings, coach and umpire communication. We have nine unusual plays with rulings. We're going to go over the look back rule. We will talk about postseason selection. And at the very end of this clinic, Jason will tell us how to receive credit for the clinic. So let's dive right in. Here's the pitching rule. If you watch the rule meeting, and you should know by now, the NFHS pitching rule has changed. This is covered in rule number six. Rule 242, the definition of a pitch has not changed. A pitch is a live ball delivered to the batter by the pitcher with a legal underhand motion. An illegal pitch is any violation of the pitching rule. Also on 242, a no pitch is a declaration by the umpire that halts play and nullifies the pitch. A quick pitch is a pitch delivered by the pitcher that catches the batter off balance or catches the batter unprepared to bat. Preventing a quick pitch is partly the umpire's responsibility. This is the reason we have pitchers take or simulate taking a sign from the catcher. Rule six, the requirements for a pitcher prior to starting the pitch has not changed. The pitcher must take a position with the pivot foot in contact with the pitcher's plate and the non-pivot foot in contact with or behind the pitcher's plate. Both feet must be on the ground within or partially within the 24 inch length of the pitcher's plate. The pitcher's shoulders must be in line with first and third base and the ball must be in the glove or the pitching hand and the hands must be separated. This part of the pitching rule has not changed. This part of the rule is a clarification. The pitcher must have at least one foot in contact with the pitcher's plate. The pitcher shall take or simulate taking the signal from the catcher. After taking the sign or simulating the sign from the catcher, the pitcher must bring their hands together in front of the body. The hands must be together for not less than one second nor more than 10 seconds before releasing the ball. The hands may be motionless or moving. The pitcher shall not be considered in the pitching position unless the catcher is within the lines of the catcher's box and in position to receive the pitch. The pitcher shall not take position on or near the pitching plate without having possession of the ball. The pitcher may remove herself from the pitching position as follows. Before the hands come together, the pitcher must step back with both feet. The pitcher must remove herself from the pitching position if the hands are together and no part of the windup motion has been made, she must step back with both feet. In either case, there is no restriction on which foot is removed first. The penalty for violating any of the previous pitching requirements is an illegal pitch. The umpire shall declare an illegal pitch with a verbal illegal 
and give the delayed dead ball signal with the left hand. Results of the illegal pitch may vary upon whether the ball is hit or there was a swing or the batter didn't swing at all. It is important for umpires to know when the pitch starts. Any step back with a non-pivot foot must begin before the start of the pitch. And the pitch starts when the hands separate. Once the pitch starts, the hands separate. The pitcher may only take one step and it must be forward for the batter and simultaneous with the delivery. Here is the new part of the pitching rule. While pushing off from the pitcher's plate, both feet may be disengaged from the playing surface as long as they remain within the 24 inch width of the pitcher's plate and do not create a replant of the pivot foot that results in the pitcher being farther away from the pitcher's plate. Pushing off with a pivot foot from a place other than the pitcher's plate resulting in the non-pivot foot becoming closer to home plate is illegal. This is the replant. It is not a stop if the pitcher slides a foot in any direction on the pitcher's plate provided contact is maintained with the pitcher's plate. New to IGH SAU softball for 2024, will be additional lines that are added to the field. The softball committee voted to add pitchers lane lines to assist the coaches in teaching pitchers to pitch legally. It will also assist the umpires when having to call illegal pitches. This diagram is on the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union website. Now for pitching videos, uh, Tom Berger will talk a little bit about some pitching videos that the Federation High School has put together. All right, thanks, Kathy. Rule six, stepping outside the chute illegal. Rule 612C, while pushing off from the pitcher's plate, both feet may disengage from the playing surface as long as they remain within the 24-inch width of the pitcher's plate. Now we'll show a video. As you can see on that video, that pitcher's left foot or her non-pivot foot landed outside the 24 inch, inch width of the pitching plate. Obviously this year we will have lines to help us assist with that call and something that I like to do before the game while watching warmups is determine if that is going to be on my radar with the current pitcher. Rule six, stepping back is legal. Any step back with a non-pivot foot must begin before the start of the pitch. And again, the start of the pitch begins when the hands separate. The pitcher must remain within the 24 inch width of the pitcher's plate on their step back. Now we'll show a video of that. The pitcher step back, it's a legal push and a drag. That pitch again was legal. This pitcher stepping back before the hands separate, the next movement is forward. That is legal. Again, rule six, sliding the pivot foot forward is illegal. Pushing off with the a pivot foot from a place other than the pitcher's plate. This would resulting in the non-pivot foot becoming closer to home plate 
would be an illegal pitch. We will show a video with that as well. The pivot foot stepped forward, so therefore we have an illegal pitch. Illegal. This is probably one of the biggest violations that is allowed um, that we see as a group of um, advisors, the rule 611AB, taking or simulate taking a sign. We'll have a video with that. The pitcher must still take or simulate a signal while on the pitcher's plate with their hands separated. We will show a video of this. Pitcher steps on. She is looking towards her catcher for a signal and then puts her hands together. That is legal. Getting the signal off of the pitching plate is also legal as long as she takes or simulates a sign once she steps onto the pitching plate. In that video, she did so, and therefore she is legal. New rule, rule six, disengaging from the plane surface while pushing off from the pitcher's plate, both feet may now disengage from the plane surface as long as they remain within the 24 inch width of the pitcher's plate. We'll have a video with that as well. That pitcher has both feet in the air. In years past, that would be an illegal pitch, but the rule change this year, that is now legal. That was a legal drag as well. This photo shows that both feet are once again off of the ground. That is legal. Now, in years past, that would be an illegal pitch. That is legal as the pitcher has the pivot foot dragging. The non-pivot foot is in the air, so that also is legal. Rule 247, a replant. There is a new rule definition for a replant. Replant of the pivot foot occurs when the pitcher pushes off the plane surface anywhere other than the pitcher's plate prior to the act of delivering the pitch. Thank you, Tom. Those videos, uh, not the still pictures, but the videos are posted on the Girls Athletic Union website. For our next part of our clinic, uh, we're going to go over approved drying agents and Jim Doyle will talk about this. Thanks, Kathy. Rule 622, approved drying agents. The pitcher shall not be allowed to use tape or other non-approved substances on the ball or any contact points of the pitching hand or fingers. No other player should apply a foreign substance to the ball. And remember that dirt is not considered a foreign substance. The pitcher shall wipe off their fingers before contacting the ball if they have licked their fingers. The pitcher shall be allowed to use under the supervision 
of and control of the umpires, powdered rosin. Any comparable drying agent listed on the USA Softball Certified Equipment webpage, usasoftball.org. It is necessary to wipe off these drying agents before making contact with the ball. Any comparable drying agent listed on the USA Softball Certified Equipment webpage, usasoftball.org. This is an example of a legal drying agent, powdered rosin. It is not necessary to wipe off these drying agents. I believe I said that wrong a second ago. Again, it is not necessary to wipe off these drying agents before making contact with the ball. An example of a legal drying agent is Gorilla Gold. This is an, is an example of an illegal drying agent, Brock Rosin. And this is another example of an illegal drying agent, Gorilla Gold Golf. Thank you, Jim. The next part of our clinic will be uh, 2024 points of emphasis about time between half innings. And the presenter is Tom Sullivan. Thank you, Kathy. And Rule 6-2-5. Umpires and coaches should place close attention to the 60 second time limit between half innings. Coaches and and umpires need to work together. Coaches need to keep their players hustling, and umpires need to attend to their responsibilities. At the beginning of each half inning, no more than one minute may be used to deliver no more than five pitches to the catcher or other teammates. The one minute time limit begins from the third out of the previous half inning. A pitcher returning to the pitching position in the same half inning will not be granted any warm-up pitches unless the umpire authorizes more pitches due to implement, implement weather or if a pitcher was removed due to injury or by rule. Some responsibilities of the umpire include facilitate the defense getting into place, the pitcher warming up, lineup changes, and starting the inning. The role of the umpire is not visiting with the fans or having an extended discussion with the other umpires that is not game related. This rule is about managing the flow of the game. Umpires are, there, are not there to rush players, but to maintain a good flow of the game. This can be done without being overly aggressive, often just a simple, here we go, or let's get ready to play, is all the encouragement that a team needs to know it is time to get back to playing. Utilizing these simple reminders during each half inning, as well as during charge conferences, can help make sure a good game flow is maintained. Set the tone early. Violating the second, the 60 second rule, there's no penalty. Excessive warm up pitches, penalty. Penalty is um, a pitcher shall be penalized by awarding a ball to the batter for each pitch in excess of five. This does not apply if the umpire delays the start of the play due to substitution, conference, injury, etc. Umpires are responsible for game management. As I said, to maintain a consistent 60 second, one minute time between half innings, coaches keep players hustling, umpires tend to your, your responsibilities. Good luck on your 2024 softball season, have fun. Thank you, Tom. Now we'll talk a little bit about another 2024 point of emphasis, coach and umpire communication. Coaches and umpires interactions 
are seen by everyone at the game. Many games are also streamed. You as an umpire are always being watched. Interactions with coaches should be conversational. Note this softball umpire. He is listening, hands are down at his side. The coach and the umpire are mostly side to side, not face to face. Keep your voice down, just have a conversation. Coach and umpire communication should not be confrontational. IGH SAU and NFHS softball is education based. As we umpires must understand the players, coaches, and parents are emotional and passionate, much like we are passionate about umpiring. This may be a Major League Baseball picture, but it illustrates the passion of the coach and the calmness of the umpire. Coaches and umpires must remain professional. After a close play or something unusual happens on the field, call time and look to the coach or to the dugout for the defensive coach. If the coach comes out, walk towards them as they are approaching you. There should be one umpire and one coach in this conversation. Remaining umpires keep the other coaches and players away. When the discussion is over, walk away. If the coach follows the umpire, the remaining umpire or umpires should step in and walk the coach back to their dugout or the coach's box. Listen without interruption to the coach's question, then respond. Umpires are the calming factor in these situations. When speaking to the coach about a rule or a play, use the words in the rule book. You do not have to cite the rule number, but it sure helps to know, for example, the pitching rule uses the word pivot foot. It helps to use these words to explain, to explain an illegal pitch. Now we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna go over nine crazy plays and their rulings, and this will be presented by Craig Snyder. So we're gonna have fun and a little quiz for you so you can get your paper and pencil out and uh, see how you do on these, these nine plays. Uh, we wanna get you in the rule book this year. Obviously you saw in the test, you didn't have the rule reference. We want people to get in the in the section of the rule book where the question is and, and try and find these things so that everybody becomes a better and more knowledgeable umpire. So with that being said, play one, B1 hits a shot off the leg of the pitcher and the ball goes directly into the dugout. You, the umpire, call the batter out for hitting the ball too hard, call a foul ball, put B1 on first base, put B1 on second base. Put your answer down, and the answer is D, put B1 on second base. Rule 843G, runners entitled to advance when a fair ball deflects off a defensive player and goes out of play in foul territory. Penalty, the ball is dead, and all runners are awarded two bases from the time of the pitch. Thus, from home plate, ends up on second base. Play two, the score is 5-4. Visitors are ahead in the bottom of the seventh with the bases loaded. The pitcher uncorks a pitch that goes over the backstop. Yes, this could happen. And you as the umpire, call a ball, give the pitcher a new ball, grab your partner and go home. Home team wins six to five, it's two run score. Ask your partner what to do or score one run and the game is tied five five. Answer, D, score one run and the game is tied 5-5. 843C penalty, runners entitled to advance when a wild or a pass ball lodges in or goes under or over or through the backstop, one base. Play three, the bases are loaded in the bottom of the seventh with the score six five visitors and one out. B4 hits a deep fly that F7 catches, hits the fence, and flips over the fence. Out of play. You, the umpire, hope F7 caught the ball and didn't drop it. 
Award all base runners two bases and the game is over. Home team wins. Ask a fan in the outfield if F7 held the ball. Or award all base runners one base and the game is tied. 6-6. Six, six. The answer, D, award all base runners one base and the game is tied. 8-4-3-H penalty. The runner is out when a live ball is unintentionally carried by a fielder from playable territory into dead ball territory. The penalty, the ball is dead. Each runner is awarded one base from the last base touch at the time the fielder entered dead ball territory. Thus, the score is tied. Play four. The coach is yelling at you, the home plate umpire, about your strike zone. You as the home plate umpire, yell back at the head coach to shut up or you're gonna eject the coach. B, make the zone even tighter so you'll show the coach who's boss. C, tell your partner to take care of the coach. Or D, quietly walk over to the coach, take your lineup card so people think there's a change. Quietly tell the coach enough is enough. If the coach continues, you may warn, restrict to the dugout or eject. Take care of the problem before it gets too big. There's your answer. It's a game management, take care of it. You have all the tools to take care of a coach if you have a problem, use them if you need them. Number five. Number five. There we go. Bases loaded, bottom of the seventh with the score tied 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two count on the batter and the next pitch is ball three. So we have a 3-2 count. For no reason at all, catcher throws the ball to third. You as the home plate umpire, have her throw the ball to the pitcher and play on with a 3-2 three, two, three, two count. Call time, declare a ball four, and award the runner on third home, and the game is over. Everybody else has to move up one base and all those good things, too. C, run like hell after calling answer B, or D, B and C. Very seldom does this happen, but if it did happen in this situation and you did call this, you might have to run. But anyway, call time, declare ball four, award the runner on third home, the game is over. The catch-off shall return the ball directly to the pitcher after each pitch, except after a strikeout or a putout made by the catcher or to play on a base runner. Penalty, the ball is awarded, the batter is awarded a ball. Number six, B1 receives the base on ball four and goes to first base and stands on the orange base. You, the umpire, hope B1 goes to the white base before F3 tags her out. Tell her to go to the, to the white base. Call her out when F1 pitches for being off the proper base. Or D, legally let her stand on the orange. Answer. D, let her legally stand on the orange. 8, 10, 1, 3, D. The offense or defense may use either the white or the colored base on a base on balls. Number seven. Substitute one has run for B1 twice in the game. In the seventh, substitute one comes in again and pinch runs for B1, her third time. You have an unreported substitute. You have an illegal substitute. S1 is out and restricted to the dugout. S1 is out and the head coach and S1 are restricted to the dugout. You need to know the difference between an unreported substitute and an illegal substitute. And in this case, you have an illegal substitute. And the answer is E, B, and C. The illegal substitute is a player who enters or re-enters the game without eligibility to do so. Number eight, with R1 on second, B2 is the legal batter with no outs. However, B3 bats for B2 and hits a double scoring R1. The defensive coach tells the umpire B3 is batting out of order. You count the run and B4 is the batter. B2 is out, R1 goes back to second and the next batter is B3. 
Same answer as B, but the next batter is B4. Put B3 in the head coach in the dugout for batting out of order. The answer to number eight, B3 is out. R1 goes back to second. The next batter is B3. Penalty rule 712. The batter who should have batted is out, so technically B2 is out. When an improper batter becomes a runner or is put out and the defensive team appeals to the umpire, the umpire shall declare the batter who should have batted out, not the improper batter. And lastly, number nine, as an umpire to get ready to, for the season, you should make sure your pants fit, contact all the ADs on your schedule, checking date, start time, tell the AD when you plan to arrive, pay your umpiring fee, watch the rules meeting and pass the test, study the rule and case book, plan on having fun. The answer to number nine, all of the above. Have a great season. Thank you, Craig. Another portion of our clinic is the look back rule. And Pat Pesha will talk about this. Got to turn your sound on, Pat. So the look back rule, thanks, Kathy. Uh, the look back rule is one that I think is sometimes overlooked in National Federation just because of, uh, you know, different institutions use different, different rules than we do. So the definition of the look back rule and the pitcher circle is this. The 16 foot circle is used for the look back rule. A pitcher is in the circle when both feet are within or partially within the line. So if she's touching the lines, she's in, even though 90% of her feet are hanging out, as long as two of them are touching lines, we're good. And the feet may touch the lines and extend outside of the line. <clears throat> the look back rule will be in effect when the ball is live. A batter runner has touched first base or been declared out and the pitcher has possession of the ball in the circle. <clears throat> so, once the pitcher has the ball in the circle, the runner may stop one time, but then must immediately return to the base or attempt to advance the next one. And that word immediately is very important there. So if she stops and you look at her and she's still stopped, you're going to have a dead ball in and out. Uh, so once she's, the runner stops at any base, for any reason, the runner will be declared out if she leaves the base. So say she steals second and she's standing there, they throw the ball back to the circle, and then all of a sudden she decides to take off. You've got to come up big as the base umpire or the plate umpire. Either one of you can call it and call dead ball. Batter's going to be out. <clears throat> Okay, before before we get to the video, before we get to the video, let's remember, uh, in the two umpire system, the plate umpire is always going to have a lead runner on this. And the base umpire is more than likely going to have the runner at second or the runner at first, whichever the case may be. But we have to, we can't all be looking at the ball. We can't all be looking at one runner and not the other. So uh more times than not that's something that should be gone over in your pregame i don't know if that always is and remember the look back rule she doesn't have to look at her if she's got the ball the pitcher that is in the circle then the look back rule is in effect another thing is when we have a base hit and we have a cutoff of first or third base sometimes we have that girl going staying in the circle and sometimes people get confused that the ball's in the circle. Well, it's not in the pitcher's hands. So it needs to be in the pitcher's hands in the circle. So now we're going to look at a video that gives us a few examples. <clears throat> OK, so here you can see the pitcher's outside of the circle. She's still outside the circle here because one foot's in, one foot's out. Now we're going to continue on. Okay, stop again. Now she's in the circle because one foot's completely in, the other's on the line. 
So just realize that's why we always want to keep our eyes on on that at all times. So here the pitcher is going to release the pitch and the batter is going to walk. Pitcher now receives the ball in the circle. Batter runner hits first base and keeps going. You can stop it for a minute now. Okay. Notice the runner on third immediately goes back to third on that play. She immediately goes back once the batter runner hits third base, which is which is what she's supposed to do because the look back rule was then in effect. So now we'll continue on. <clears throat> now on this play, we're going to have the batter is going to walk again, and she's going to go to first base. There's the ball in the circle. The runner hits first. What do we got here? Immediate dead ball. Throw your hands up. You've got a dead ball. Here we've got a base hit. We throw it back in. Now this is a legal play. As you can see, the batter runner overran first base on this. She overruns it <clears throat> on the base hit. And then as the ball is in flight to the pitcher, she is fine to take off and advance to the next base. Or she could go back to the other one. So here we've got the ball in the circle. This is legal. The third, the girl at third can stay there. Now. Once the ball's in the circle and the girl hits first base, she can take off for home. Here in this situation, stop, always keep our eyes on the ball. Now, the reason we're saying that is that girl stole second base, and as the ball went to the pitcher, she took off. Notice how the plate umpire comes up to third and is ready to make that call on that one. So remember, as long as the ball's in flight, the girls are released. They're free to move. There's no problem there. So we're going to move on here to the next video. <clears throat> okay, so we have runners at first and second base. We're going to have a ground ball hit. They're going to try to get two. They get the out. And then notice how she runs past first base. Now, ball's in the circle. Is she going towards second? No, she is not. Then she comes back and does go towards second base. Now, in National Federation, that would be an out. You cannot, once the ball's in the circle and you're coming back and you don't immediately make a break towards second base, you have to be aware of that. Now, the reason you want to be aware of it is because in some softball organizations, this play is legal. They can do this, but in National Federation High School rules, that ball's in the circle and she's walking back to the base and then takes off. You, we got to throw our hands up. The base umpire should have thrown his hands up there and called an out because that's what you would have had. So that's why we always say be alert to those things. Make sure we're watching. <clears throat> that's why we always want the plate umpire to be out to the circle on a base hit, you know, so we're watching and we both don't turn our back at the same time because this does happen where we both turn our back. All of a sudden she takes off and nobody knows whether she was in the circle or not. So we always want to be alert at all times and some teams do try this. So here's our last play we're going to look at. <clears throat> we're going to have a pitch with a runner on first. There's a runner on third too that you can kind of see. So she fakes. The runner fakes towards second, but then when the ball's in the circle, she immediately goes back to first base. Now, we can't see the runner at third. We assume she stayed on the base when the ball went to the circle. But we're going to show it one more time here. We got the pitch. The girl's off. The pitcher catcher fakes it, and the, and the runner on first fakes towards second. Then once the ball's in the circle, she immediately heads back. So... We have no violation on her, but she can go either way there if she wanted to. So she's good. Then the ball's back. She stops. That's her one stop. And then she's back to the base. Everything's legal there. No issues with that one. So the only one <clears throat> that I have left that I want to talk about that we don't have a video on is where we have a runner on third and the batter walks. So the batter runs down toward first base, hits first base, and starts going to second immediately, like in our first video. Now, 
once she hits first base, that runner at third must either head home or return to third. Because once the ball's in the circle, pitcher does not have to look at her. She does not have to do anything. If she just catches the ball and stands there, and the runner at third is off the base, she's out. It's dead ball immediately. We call her out. Now, if the pitcher runs toward the the batter runner who walked or she raises her arm to throw it, then we have a different situation. Then the then the look back rule is released and they can do whatever. But you got to be very aware of that. And your home plate umpire, as soon as she walks, she should be stepping back, having the pitcher in your line of vision and the runner at third so you can see everything. And once that batter runner hits first base, the girl at third better be back on third. Or you're going to have an out. So that's all I've got on the look back rule. We hope you all have a great season. And thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Pat. We're going to talk a little bit now about how we select postseason umpires for Iowa Girls High School Athletic Unions. For postseason requirements, the umpires must register with the IGH SAU through the Dragonfly Center for Official Services. This is a little uh, icon of how you log in and where you find it. You need to review the rule meeting, pass the test, and just to note, the test is written by the NFHS. We, as the Girls Athletic Union, only modify it to include our adaptations and certain points of emphasis. We check recommendations from all the coaches. So to get that recommendation, you must sign the scorebook legibly so they can put the right recommendation down for you, and then we get it at the end of the year. You must attend an Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union approved clinic once every three years. You must have a satisfactory evaluation by an observer or an advisor in the last three years. And you must be scheduled for at least 12 varsity games during the year of the tournament. We choose umpires from all parts of the state. Each advisor gives me names of qualified umpires from their area of the state. Umpires are not all from the metro areas. We as a group try to bring in a few new umpires every year. Everyone has a chance for postseason. Even first year umpires would be eligible if all requirements, including the clinic, are met. In the past seven years, we have brought over 35 new umpires to the state tournament. We are preparing for the future. We talked a little bit about observations. So some of the things that the observers are gonna look for. We look to see that you're wearing the proper uniform, a mask, shin guards, chest protector, two ball bags on the plate and no ball bags on the bases. Uh, we want you to wear the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union logo for the postseason games. And the uniform must be clean and properly worn. Observers look for the umpire that controls the game flow. We look to make sure that you're giving the ball and strike count to the pitcher, at least while she's looking at you. Fill your ball bags between innings, handle the coaches, and ignore the fans. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union softball contacts are Jason Esslinger and myself, Kathy Creighton. I'm the softball umpire coordinator. Our contact information is on the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union website. My cell phone is listed here. The regional advisors are Tom Berger for Northeast Iowa, Craig Snyder for Northwest Iowa, Tom Sullivan for North Iowa, Pat Pesha for Southeast Iowa, and Jim Doyle for the Southwest Iowa. I also help coordinate here in the central Iowa, Des Moines metro area. Jason will take over from here. Thank you. All right, thanks Kathy. And thanks to the advisors for all of their work and getting this clinic ready. Uh, now we've come to the important part. We wanna make sure that everyone that watches this receives clinic, receives credit. Um, basically all you need to do, if you have your cell phone with you, um, 
is uh, basically take a picture or scan your the QR code that's here. Um, that will take you to a, a Google document for you to fill out and get proper credit. Um, I will leave this on here for about 30 seconds after I get finished talking uh, to give you the opportunity to do that. If you have issues with that, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, my number is 515-401-1836. That's my office number. Or you can email me at Jason, J-A-S-O-N, Esslinger, E-S-L-I-N-G-E-R, at IGHSAU.org and I will I will email you the link so you can get your proper credit. So we're going to leave this on for just a little bit so you can take the time to scan this and and hopefully you won't have any issues with it. We've tried it and it seems to work. Um, uh, so it should take you right there. Uh, otherwise, again, once again, thank you for watching and uh, we'll have this posted hopefully on April 15th on Monday. Uh, so it'll be on the official section of the website uh, and it's under softball. So you'll be able to watch it there as well. Thank you again. And we'll leave this up for just a little bit. And Jason, would you make sure that Elise sends a notice to all the umpires that this link is out there now? Sure will. That will go out tomorrow as well. Thank you. Thank you, advisors, for putting in this long night to present this clinic. I appreciate all your work. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm good.